At the time when he trained in AKA, he was still very young. And now it's clear that he is on the roll. Gained experience, he has good chances of becoming the champion. I don't exclude that option, because yes, Nganu can punch, he has a very scary punching power, but Pavlovich is not inferior. Pavlovich, what differentiates him from Nganu is that Pavlovich has a great Greco Roman wrestling, body wrestling. If he were to fight him, I think that weighing on Nganu for one and a half or two rounds, I think stylistically, Pavlovich can beat him. The heavyweight class in every fighting promotion is oftentimes more interesting to the casual viewer than any other. Of course, thanks to the flashy and vivid knockouts, throughout the history of the world's best league, its big scene saw hundreds of powerful athletes. Most of them were remembered due to their heavy punches and strikes. That scared many guys on the UFC roster. However, not many of them can show off the same stats as the number three ranked heavyweight in the face of Sergei Pavlovich. This guy doesn't let the fights go past the first round on principle. And today, we're going to tell you about all the knockouts of White and Ganu. Please don't forget about the likes, comments with forwards, and subscribe to the channel. Here we go. The professional career of Sergei Pavlovich as a mixed martial artist began in December of 2014. By that moment, the beginner fighter already had time to gain a lot of experience in Greco-Roman wrestling, military hand-to-hand -hand combat, and of course, combat sambo. His first appearance in a local octagon happened at the 18th event of Battle of Moscow against Alexander Derevyanko. The debut performance of a 22-year-old prospect looked like Sergei Pavlovich was not a rookie in the octagon, but an experienced and seasoned veteran. The age difference of 10 years between the fighters was not evident at all. Pavlovich properly calculated the distance, utilized kicks and timely reacted with counter-attacks. Derevyanko simply did not know how to approach him and only occasionally decided to attack, though unsuccessfully. For a while, Sergei worked as the second number and turned up only when the opponent shortened the distance. But closer to the end of the second minute, he decided to converge himself and did it quite successfully. He pressed the opponent to defense and teleported Derevyanko to the lower level with an amplitude throw. In the end, he couldn't make it out of this position in full peace. Sergei Pavlovich did not hesitate and barraged him with crushing blows, driving his head into the canvas until the referee stopped the fight. Poor Derevyanko even lost his mouth guard after one of the heavy shots. Thus, the Russian heavyweight earned his first debut victory via TKO. Three months later, the Russian prospect entered the octagon to add the second name to his resume. On March the 25th of 2015, he fought his namesake, Sergei Boynichov. The clash was held at Fight Night's tournament, Cup of Moscow. As soon as the referee started the fight, athletes got down to business. The young prospect took the initiative and went forward. He immediately threw a front kick to the body, but Bonachov tried to take advantage of this opportunity and execute a takedown. It was a fatal mistake, the consequences of which caught up to the guy almost instantly. Sergei Pavlovich demonstrated an elite level of takedown defense for his age and momentarily rushed at him with all his power. The fight was stopped after just a couple of seconds. The Russian needed only one third of a minute to score the second professional victory. Two months later, Sergei Pavlovich performed in Slovakia. At one of the tournaments of the local full fight organization, he shared the cage with Ilya Skondrich. Overall, the fast rising heavyweight prospect did not distinguish himself with anything specific in that fight meaning that he entered the octagon with one simple goal, to get the victory. The Russian Terminator began to execute the set task from the very first seconds. He immediately went for an attack and started to press the opponent's back to the fence. Closer to the end of the first minute, the trigger made a typical snap and Sergei Pavlovich began to turn Ilya Skondrich into a pile of meat and bones. He beat the entire soul out of the Slovakian and in a merciless manner earned his third professional win in just 75 seconds. 61 days later, the Russian returned to the local octagon. At another tournament, Fight Night Sochi, 
he competed against a fighter called Vladimir Dynico. The fourth professional win of Sergei Pavlovich came pretty quickly. As soon as the fight started, the guys collided in the center of the octagon. An accelerating and still 22-year-old prospect was the first one to attack, as always. A deadly right after a combination completely crushed Vladimir Dynico in just 24 seconds. It seems like this guy was born for this. Sticking to the traditions, Sergei Pavlovich came back into the game two months later. On September 25th, he fought Sultan Motazaliev at EFN Fight Night Dagestan. In this fight, the Russian's opponent played the role of a tester. At first, he decided to check Sergei's skills in the stand-up. When the acquired results did not suit him, he began to test his takedown defense. Skills of Pavlovich in that aspect were not inferior, and in the end, Motazaliev checked the durability of his own chin against the shots of White and Ganu. Sure, there was a long road ahead till Sergei got his official nickname, but still, as it was the case with the last two experiences, the final test defined the outcome. Sergei Pavlovich earned a fifth professional win via TKO in 59 seconds. And mind you, it's only been eight months since the guy had his debut in the professional sport. On December 11th, White and Ganu decided to close a fruitful year with another highlight of the night. At EFN Fight Nights Moscow, the Russian fighter faced a German called Ruben Wolf. That fight lasted exactly 120 seconds. Sergei Pavlovich needed only two minutes to outshine a vivid striker in the face of Ruben Wolf with his rich arsenal. The Russian had time to press the German fighter to defense a couple of times and beat absolutely everything out of him, including the desire to keep fighting. Because soon the guy couldn't handle such an onslaught and tapped on the fence in surrender. Sergei Pavlovich broke into the professional league and earned six stoppage victories in just one year. This man is putting his potential on full display. After that, the Russian heavyweight had a fight on April the 29th on 2016, and in the conclusion of the unanimous decision, he beat Magomed Bag Agaev. The appearance of Sergei Pavlovich at Fight Night's Global Arena happened on June the 17th at the 50th event where he went up against a Frenchman, Chaban Ka. The French fighter rushed at his opponent at the very beginning of the bout. The Russian met his vis-a-vis -vis with a clean strike, making Chaban resort to the ground game. Pavlovich timely reacted and stuffed the takedown. It was followed by a powerful ground and pound. The Frenchman tried to change the position to avoid the fate of White and Ganu's six previous opponents. After some time, fighters got back to their feet. After exchanging a couple of bombs, Chaban Ka went for a second takedown attempt, but failed. At that moment, Sergei Pavlovich entered the killer mode. He once again pressed his opponent to defense like a helpless prey and rushed at him in a ruthless fashion. Closer to the end of the second minute, a cutting right overhand quickly put an exclamation mark in this rivalry. The Frenchman couldn't recover from the received damage in time and lost to the Russian fighter via TKO. Being on a streak of eight consecutive wins, Sergei Pavlovich faced Ahmed Sheikh Giligayev. That fight was supposed to happen on September 25th in the main event of the evening at Fight Nights Global 51. Sure, we study every opponent. This guy is not easy. I'm telling you, it's going to be an interesting fight. Just watch. The fight unfolded in a rather expected scenario. A stout-looking fighter in Giligayev constantly tried to shoot for Sergei Pavlovich's legs to keep such a dangerous striker on the ground. The Russian did everything he needed to and each time masterfully avoided such situations. When the fight passed the equator, White and Ganu began to act. At first, he shot with a precise uppercut that made Akhmet Sheikh spin 180. But it was only the beginning because it was followed by more devastating blows that ultimately smashed Gelegeyev to the canvas. Another first round knockout. Actually, I was expecting to go all three rounds. To be fair, as I said earlier, you never expect a stoppage. We always prepare thoroughly. We had a very good camp in Kislovodsk, then here in Moscow meaning it was a two-stage preparation. Very good camp. 
and I was expecting to have a three round fight. Already in November, Sergei Pavlovich fought Alexei Kudin. The heavyweight Grand Prix finale was held at the 54th event where the undefeated prospect earned a unanimous decision win. After that, the Russian returned to the cage on June the 2nd of 2017. He ultimately conquered the vacant FNG title, extending his win streak to 11 in a row. The preparation is going well. Everything goes according to plan. I feel great. I'm also having a second workout session in the evening today. So we stick to the regimen, all good, great mood. As Sergei already said himself, at that time he was preparing for his first and, as history taught us, the last defense of the Fight Night's Global Championship. On November 19th, he was supposed to clash with Kirill Serdelnikov in the main event of the 79th tournament. In this fight, the main sparring partner of the legendary Fedor Emelianenko couldn't withstand the onslaught and devastating power of his countrymen. Even though the fight unfolded in a rather nervous and so to say broken rhythm, Sergei Pavlovich once again impressed everybody with his ability to find breaches in the opponent's defense and properly capitalize on that. He was the first one to find a needed distance from where he managed to deliver dynamite in his hands to Kirill Sedelnikov's face without receiving damage. Eventually, the champion put this rivalry to the rest on the 2 minutes and 45 second mark. A powerful overhand with a subsequent follow-up did its thing and put the undefeated prospect on a 12-fight winning streak. A year later, the talented prospect with a perfect record and impressive performances was quite expectedly signed with the world's best league. On November the 24th of 2018, Sergei Pavlovich debuted in the UFC and faced Alistair Overeem. I'm glad that I'm going to fight soon. I'm being asked like an experienced opponent and stuff like that. We are all human. We are all made of meat and bones. So one simply needs to prepare, train, go out and fight. Sure, he is an experienced and tough guy. We watched his fights, prepared. I mean, one can't say that he is a walk in the park, but one needs to fight. To go out and become better, one needs to fight the best. As you remember, the first appearance of the Russian prospect in the main promotion was not very successful. Ultimately, on that night, the luck was on the side of a more experienced Alistair Overeem, who stopped Sergei Pavlovich via first round TKO. The other Dagestani fighters, but he's no oh. Oh, In the end, the first and only loss of White and Ganu only fired up the young fighter. In 2019, the Russian earned two first round victories against Marcelo Gome and Morris Green, all more so in an extremely dominant and convincing fashion. First of all, I want to say thank you to everybody who was rooting for me, to everybody who, and it's kind of uncommon to speak on that, but there's a small nuance. Literally prior to this fight, when I had a loss and before I had an undefeated streak, I heard so much crap about me, dare I say it. So, I want to say to all these couch warriors, it doesn't bother me at all, but there should be some kind of a boundary and they have to be put in their place, so to say. To even say something, one needs to at least go out and fight in amateurs, so it's kind of a separate topic. I just wanted to say that. After that, Sergei Pavlovich took a rather long break of two and a half years. On March the 19th of 2022, he returned to the main octagon and fought the Dagestani in the face of Shamil Abdurakimov. The third stoppage win at the London Arena was scored rather quickly. Already in the fourth minute of the first round, Sergei Pavlovich stopped his vis-a-vis -vis by a TKO. Three and one in the world's best league. Greetings, couch warriors. I want to say thank you for whole London, everyone, and whoever trained me, everyone, all the collectives. Oh! He detonates that right hand onto the chin of Abdurahimov. Guess he's gonna be it. Yeah, he's gonna. 
Four months later, White and Ganu faced the Black Beast in Derek Lewis. That bout was held at UFC 272 in Texas. Dangerous fighter, and in my career, there's been a lot of great dangerous fighters. Like I said, I've done the work. I'm 100% ready, and the fight will show. The Russian got done with Derek Lewis even faster. Sergei Pavlovich needed only 55 seconds to stop the Black Beast and break into the top 15. I was ready to punch him for five rounds, for three rounds, doesn't matter. I was ready for this fight. I worked really hard to be here. Thank you for everyone who supported me. And the most recent appearance of the Russian fighter on MMA radars took place in December of 2022 at UFC on ESPN 42. Sergei Pavlovich clashed with a talented Australian, Tai Tuivasa. Well, he is a striker, good puncher, a brawler. I would even say that he and Derek Lewis are similar. But Tuivasa is a little bit faster. Apart from that, the fighting style is pretty much the same. You know, to strike, press, strike. Overall, Sergei Pavlovich happened to be right. The Russian bogatier dismantled the Australian prospect after 54 seconds into the fight. Even one second faster than it was against the Black Beast. And as always, in a devastating and dominant style. He's got to get this fight clinched. Oh, he's done. Pavlovich raining down the blow to get pulled off. It's win number two for the Russian. Interesting fact. White and Garnu beat such well-known fighters multiple times faster than a two-time title contender in the face of Cyril Garn. Of course, we acknowledge that this kind of math does not always indicate that one or another fighter is better, but the fact remains, Sergei Pavlovich is a real threat that should be taken seriously. Right now, Sergei Pavlovich is on a five-fight winning streak in the world's best league. On top of that, the Russian is ranked number three in the heavyweight division and has an overall record of 17 wins and one loss. Absolutely every finish in White and Ganu's career is scored in the first round. And already on April the 22nd, a 30-year-old fighter will fight Curtis Blades in the main event of the evening at Fight Night 222. If this fight goes in the same way as the previous ones, there are no doubts that this guy will get an opportunity to fight for the heavyweight championship this year. We wish Sergei Pavlovich luck in his upcoming fight from the bottom of our hearts and can't wait for his return to the octagon.